Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Tezzeret the Schemer. Now, Tezzeret is anywhere between $1.20 to $3.70. $1.20, you can actually find it on TCG Player. Now, you do have to pay, I think, $0.49 cents or $0.99 cents shipping, which takes it up to, let's say, $2 and some chains. But you can find playsets of him online for pretty cheap. Let's talk about why Tezzeret did not work out. First of all, it didn't have the $59 price tag that Chandra came out with. It just didn't have that price tag. Now, for something like Tezzeret, it came out at $14, which is reasonable for a planeswalker. So you could say that he was really, really hyped given the fact that he's $2 or under right now. What I like about Tezzeret, Tezzeret, the big negative, very, very weak. You would need the meta to completely change around him for him to be playable. One of the reasons he is so weak is due to his abilities. His abilities are not very strong and they don't do well to protect him. Now, if he generated a 1-1 token that could be sacrificed for mana... That would be actually pretty good, but he just generates a pretty much a clue that can be sacrificed. It's not even a clue. It doesn't draw your card. A Lotus Bloom would be the correct card equivalent. Now, his other abilities are not that good. But $2 for a Planeswalker, that is very interesting. I did not realize he was so low. I expected him still to be $5. $5, I wouldn't pick him up at. But at two, very few Mythic Planeswalkers that were not reprinted into Oblivion, like Vraska. I remember Vraska was at $2.50 when it was reprinted in the Jace vs. Vraska deck. And I was like, oh, because I was holding a ton of them, and I really liked her, and I thought she would be very good, but after the reprints, she went down, and now she's back up again, so she has some bounce. It's very difficult, just like it's difficult for a Planeswalker to stay above $35, like Liliana, The Last Hope. It's even more difficult for a Planeswalker to go to $2. That's Tibble. That's Tibble. Very few Planeswalkers are that bad. Now, is Tezzeret that bad? The answer is yes. He is currently being played in zero decks. As you can see, recent decks. No standard, no vintage, nada not putting up any results. So you might be like, oh, you know, Chandra, she could be played in more decks, she could be played in less, the meta can shift. This card is literally played in no decks that I can find, outside of like a tier four rogue build, right? And I was looking for decks on MTG Salvation and the decks were very bad. I looked at it and said, hmm, hmm, I don't know. Now you might say, why are we wasting our time talking about $2 card? And the answer is, I like it. I like it because I don't see it going too much more down. Okay, let's take this example. For a store to sell you this at $1.20, they're actually, with TCG fees, probably making a dollar. If your store has a lot of these because they cracked boxes, I feel like a correct offer would be to offer the store a dollar or two dollars in cash for all their copies. Now that you've accumulated a lot of copies, you can definitely trade into them. This is not going to be a card most people will want to trade. Uh, this is not going to be a card most people are looking to keep. They were looking to trade this card because it just doesn't have value. It just has absolutely no playability right now. But like I always say, the meta can shift. I've seen some huge shift. Like, here's the biggest one. Steam Vance was a $5 to $6 Shockland when RTR came out. Tempo Guardian was a $15, 12 to $15 Shockland. Now it's a little reverse. And that's because of meta. And that's because of modern. But when Slesnia was the strongest guild, then obviously the Slesnia land was the most expensive. Although historically, it was by far the cheapest when you look at the Ravnica block, the original block. So when I saw that, I said, oh yeah, that reminds me of all these times that a card was not very good, a color type was not very good, and then suddenly became very good, and all the cards went up. Another good example is Underworld Connections from Ravnica. 
Ravnica had a lot of interesting decks, right? Uh, here you can see the dollar twenty for with ninety, I guess ninety nine cents shipped. Um, so let's talk about you know, what do you, what do I like and what do I not like. I told you all the stuff I don't like. I told you the reason I like it is because it's a low price. The balance of the two tells me to buy it. Like it's telling me right now I should just buy this card. When I told you to buy Sahili, obviously I couldn't have guaranteed, I couldn't have imagined they would put out a Guardian, which would make a tier one deck and then spike her price to $20 before going down slightly due to people afraid that it would be banned. And eventually they banned it and now it's down to where it normally would be. I picked Shahili because overall she's very powerful for a free mana planeswalker. She's not in the correct colors. That's why I didn't like her. She was blue and red, but I never doubted that if blue and red became a viable color, she would be played. And she would be very, very good. So out came the cat, and now and then we had a tier one deck for a little bit of time, and then the banning, and now it's back to its original price. You never know what's an hour of devastation. All I know is Nicol Bolas is in it. And just like I love Chandra, because Chandra, turn four, Chandra. Plus her or minus her or defend her. It doesn't really matter because you just need her to survive. So you can actually minus her to destroy a creature. Then on turn five, drop a land, play the plus one Chandra, get two red mana. You have seven, there comes Nicol Bolas. The same can be done with Tezzeret. My gut feeling is people will want to play Nico Boles because Nico Boles will be like Ugin. Ugin is like, whatever you, we can do, let's play him. Because when you get him out on the field, it's very, very difficult to win the game. Or to lose the game if he's on your side. If he's on your opponent's side, it's probably very difficult. To the point that you have like Ugin Spirit. You had all these random cards that like would bring Ugin back because that's what you wanted. That is the card you wanted to play. Now, when I talk about the, I, I do want to make reference to this. eBay always has this 10% coupon. It's 10% off whatever you want to buy. Select items. I'm pretty sure this works for magic cards. And this could be interesting if you wanted to buy, you know, a collection of cards. Maybe you want to speculate on the 4,000 copies of breaking and entering someone speculated on and failed. You might be like, oh, well, maybe they'll make a the rule change. They won't, but... I mean, it's an interesting speculation nonetheless, because if you hit it, wow, like to accumulate that 2,000, 4,000 copies and a lot of foils of that speculation, breaking and entering, as well, beck and call, is interesting. If you can save 10% off whatever it was, like $2,500, that's 25, yeah, 2500 it's $250 that you would be save, saving. So anyway, I just wanted you guys to know that eBay is having this sale. So if you wanted to buy magic cards, you could... Buy them from eBay and save 10%, which would be very good if you're buying more expensive cards. Now, Tesseret, I like. I like him. Lots of negatives, no playability, but at a dollar or two dollars for a mythic planeswalker without reprint yet, I really do hope they choose him. I mean, it would be a disaster if they reprinted him. It would be a disaster for the dual deck, and it would be even more epic disaster for his price point. But barring reprint, I like him. And the reason I like him is for all the reasons I liked Sahili. If the color shift and blue black is a strong color and you people want to play Nicol Bolas, they're playing Grixis or maybe four color control, he's viable. And even if he sees play in 1% of those decks, his price will go up because there's nowhere to go at $1.20. Where can you go? Like down? Like, Tilbolt was a $2 planeswalker, and that's where he stabilized that. This is about $2 now. Like, it's... <laughs> by now, you can get two of them $6.75. You can get one of them at 2 No one's buying this, right? Like, TCG players actually a lot cheaper. There's a new service, and people want me to review it. It's like card... It's a card spare. I don't know what it is right now. It just sounds like a better version of Pico Trade, where you can, like, trade it for cash. Again, I don't know if it's viable. Again, the it's going to favor the early adopters. It, this type of so I'm I speak at multi-level marketing conventions, and anytime 
you are doing a multi-level marketing, I'm not saying this is multi-level marketing, but anytime that you have something like that, the early adopters get, they get the extra points, they get the bonuses, they get to trade all the good cards. And then the later adopters get pretty much blanked. Just like Pico trade, right? That's how the pyramid triangle works. And you know, that now there's bonuses on Pico trade. There's, I mean, that's another video altogether, but maybe I will review card spare and give you an honest opinion. I am not sponsored from them and nor would I ever want to be. Uh, they're not interesting to me at this moment, but if a lot of you wanted me to talk about it, I would talk about it. But right now eBay has 10% off. That is very good considering that you can get magic cards with it. And pretty much they get 10%. They had 10% off in May too. I feel like everything is just 10% off all the time in eBay right now. Must be desperate times. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.